Mind maps are a very useful way of organising information when revising a subject. They usually start with a central topic or idea and show how all different areas of a topic link together and branch out from the central idea. They should be written and drawn by hand on a large piece of blank paper and try to use as much colour, diagrams, abbreviations as possible as this will help the brain remember. Mind maps lend themselves very well to science but they can be used for any subject at all. In fact here's one about the game of tennis. And here's a mind map I found about how to make a mind map. In my opinion, every single student should be making mind maps for each of the 16 topics for GCSE Physics. Now I hear many students say they don't like mind maps and they prefer just making notes. If you're one of these people, you probably don't like mind maps because they require quite a bit of effort. But the effort is worth it because when you personally make the connections between areas of a topic, you understand the physics much more effectively. Now the evidence about mind maps speaks for itself and there have been many studies over the years to prove that they work. One study from 2005 found that 80% of students said mind maps help them understand concepts and ideas in science more effectively. In this short video I will walk you through how I would make a mind map for one of the GCSE topics. I'm going to start at the beginning with P1, Conservation and Dissipation of Energy. This topic is all about energy, or more specifically, energy stores. Now an energy store is just another name for different types of energy. Here I would list all the different types. Electrical energy. Gravitational potential energy. Kinetic energy. Chemical energy. Thermal energy, sound, and if we can have sound, we can have light energy, and not forgetting nuclear. Now, the main idea about this topic is energy transfers, about how all these different types of energy or energy store can change from one to another. Now there's a very important rule or law that governs all energy transfers and that's called the principle of conservation of energy. Basically energy cannot be created or destroyed, it can only be transformed. Now you probably looked at various examples of conservation of energy in practice. You would have looked at the pendulum where there's a constant change or constant switch between GPE to kinetic energy and back to GPE again. You would have also looked at the bungee jump which is a bit more complicated because you've got elastic potential energy, gravitational potential energy and kinetic energy all changing between each other. And finally you might have looked at the roller coaster which again is a change from GPE into kinetic energy and back to GPE again. Now physics is all about measuring stuff so at this point we're going to ask how do we measure energy transfers. Now the amount of energy transferred when a force acts is called work done. Work done is literally the amount of energy transformed when a force moves an object. We've got an equation for calculating work done and don't forget the units. Work done is measured in joules don't forget work done is the amount of energy transferred so it's measured in joules. Force is obviously in newtons and distance in meters, all standard units. Now from the equation for work done we can derive three other equations for different types of energy. First one, gravitational potential energy. Don't forget gravitational potential energy is determined by how high an object is off the ground. The higher it is, the more GPE it has. Let's consider a mass M that's moved up through height H. The amount of GPE gained will be the amount of work done on the object. Don't forget work done 
equals force times distance. The work done is the gain in GPE. The force is the weight of the object and the distance moved is the height it gains. And we have an equation for weight which is W equals mg, so weight becomes mg. Leaving us with the equation for gravitational potential energy. The second equation that comes from the work done equation is one for kinetic energy, where kinetic energy is a half mv squared. And the third equation is one for elastic potential energy, where elastic potential energy is a half times force times extension, or a half kx squared, where k is the spring constant. So three equations which all come from the work done equation. Now let's go back and look at the principle of conservation of energy, which remember is that energy cannot be created or destroyed. Basically the total energy of a system remains constant, or the total energy in is equal to the total energy out. Now when energy is given out into the surroundings, this is called energy dissipation. Now when energy is dissipated, it can be one of two things. It can be either wasted or useful. Now don't forget, physics is all about measuring stuff. So, how do we measure energy dissipation? Now this is measured by something called efficiency. And we have an equation which is efficiency is useful out over total energy in. Another way we can measure energy transfers is by something called power. Now power is how quickly an energy transfer takes place. And again we have an equation which is power equals energy over time. Don't forget the units, energy is measured in joules, time is in seconds, and of course power is in watts. Now let's take a closer look at useful energy. The most common way of producing useful energy is with something called an electrical device. And electrical devices are all measured with things called power ratings, taking us back to the power equation. So just to summarise, physics is all about measuring things. And this topic is all about energy transfers. So to recap, how do we measure energy transfers? Well, the first one is with an equation for work done. Don't forget, work done is the amount of energy that's transferred. A second way of measuring energy transfers is with a thing called efficiency. This tells us the amount of useful energy that comes out. And a third way of measuring energy transfers is by power, which is how quickly energy transfers take place. So there you have it, the whole of P1 on a mind map. Now I've just done a brief overview of each part of the topic, but the bigger your sheet of paper, the more detail you can go into.